India generates enormous amounts of fly ash. According to the Central Electricity Authority, India has over 200 coal power plants that generated 232.56 million tons of fly ash in 2020-21. Much more than could be utilized as per the SOPs for its utilization. Millions of tons of fly ash remains accumulated over the years and lie unused as legacy ash. As per some studies, over half of India's thermal power plants fail to use their fly ash fully and fall behind the previous government targets. These numbers hints at a need for infrastructure that makes valuable products out of fly ashes. Hello and welcome to Enterclimate. My name is Shalin Verma and in this video, we will talk about the business opportunities based on the disposal and utilization of fly ash in India. Fly ash is a residue from combustion of coal, which is hazardous if disposed of improperly. An unscientific or improper disposal can cause serious issues in terms of land usage, health risks, air, soil and water pollution, which can also lead to degradation of the natural habitat. Its disposal therefore becomes very crucial for the government. However, some characteristics of fly ash also makes it useful for construction substituting many traditional construction material. Let's understand the business opportunities related to fly ash and its utilization and how it can be turned into a profitable business. Fly ash is categorized based on its chemical composition that is into class C with a higher calcium content and class F ash with low calcium fly ash and carbon content less than 5%. The fly ash also consists of oxides of aluminum, silicon, iron and calcium along with small amounts of sodium, magnesium, potassium, titanium and sulfur. These two categories of fly ash can be largely used as mineral admixture in concrete. Studies have demonstrated several usage of coal fly ash as raw material including brick construction, in the construction of highway embankments, in the production of zeolites, in the formation of mesophorous materials, in the synthesis of geopolymers and as a soil improvement agent in agriculture. Fly ash can also be used as a catalyst and as an adsorbent for gases in many industrial emissions. Now, if someone is interested in setting up a business that uses fly ash, they require an understanding of the rules related to its disposal and utilization. Fly ash is generated in coal and lignite based thermal power plants in various forms such as bottom ash, dry ash, pond ash and mound ash. Most of the time these plants are not able to use or dispose of 100% of fly ash they generate in an eco-friendly way. In such case they are liable to face penalties as per the orders of the NGT. As per the fly ash utilization rule, it is now mandatory for thermal power plants to ensure 100% utilization of fly ash within 3 to 5 years. In addition, the CPCB has also released guidelines for using fly ash for the reclamation of low-lying areas. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change released an office memorandum allowing the use of fly ash in low-lying areas for reclamation filling of abandoned mining voids and as a soil conditioner in agriculture. As per the new rules, the only way in which fly ash can be disposed of or utilized includes the construction of roads, manufacturing of brick, tiles and cement and in form of export to other countries. The existing rules on the disposal and utilization of fly ash also allows for the filling of empty mines, filling of low-lying areas and in agriculture in a controlled manner based after soil testing. The disposal and utilization of ash in construction industry is not new. Adding fly ash to concrete gives the construction an economic, ecological and technical benefit. Manufacturing brick tiles, cement, building roads and exporting it to other nations are among the only use of fly ash that are permitted today. Businesses that use fly ash are using different technologies to improve the construction quality as well as the environmental quality. Any of these businesses can be set up in areas with thermal power plants as it will guarantee a regular and cheap supply of raw material. However, adhering to the environmental regulations is also crucial as such units are classified under the red category and therefore needs pollution NOC along with many other necessary licenses and permits. However, seeking the assistance in these above process can simplify the business setup and fulfilling the associated legalities. 
Contact our experts from Enterclimate from the details shown and get started with the legalities of setting up your own construction material business using Flyash. That was all for today's video. Thank you for watching.